What is up and welcome to episode 29 of the Thursday Night Grind. It is the 16th of July and we are going to sharpen something else on the bench that I'm really excited about. Like every Thursday night, I come to YouTube and I sharpen whatever is on the bench at the American Edge, which is my sharpening business in New Hampshire. Uh, what makes me excited about today is that there's nothing cooler to me than sharpening carry knives like knives that people carry and use but not just any carry knives like carry knives that are legit like i i respect a dude that's rolling around with one of these in his pocket so what i got here is an e s e e and a winkler and you'll, i'll get you some more shots of that but man that that would look good on your hip let me just tell you that uh before we do I want to tell you what's going on in the Guild, the Guild of Professional Sharpeners. You can learn more about that at guildofsharpeners.org. If you're interested in both learning to sharpen and at the same time learning how to monetize a sharpening business from zero to as much as you want, then you should definitely check out the Guild of Professional Sharpeners. Here was what was going on over there this week. Uh, Doug laid out a nice plan for the Ducolpage technique. I don't know. Correct me, man. Like I'm probably saying it wrong. But if you go to Bonneville Sharpening Service and you look at any of his photos, he's going to have a little block with uh, his logo and his business name in there. And he shared with us how he does that. Like it's, it's brilliant branding. I love it. I was like, dude, you, you've got to like give us your recipe and your plan. Like how does that work? I look forward to making the time to do that for my own images. Uh, we also had a cool conversation that carried on from like uh, last week, which we were talking about like repairing tips and, uh, and doing grinding work. But then an upcycling idea came up where like a way to use knives that we find, like for me, I can go to the swap shop at the dump and get knives. But what can we do with those knives to turn them into a little something, you know, and then even make them available uh, to, for sale for, for a particular community, which is cool. Shifting off of the like the the sharpening thing, but then into some some other stuff I I was getting a few questions around Google my business Search engine optimization the benefits of running a blog and I just kind of shared my thoughts on all of that with the guild uh, And lastly, I've also been getting questions on the shaft collar that we use on the edge pro and I, I needed to address all of that so I went from soup to nuts in a, in a relatively short video uh, addressing exactly why we need that shaft collar uh, and really addressing like what happens if we don't use it, uh, the correct way to use it, and then all of the ways to get it. Um, because the one that I use is a $37 shaft collar, which can seem a little nuts. It ju it's justifiable for me, but maybe not for everybody. But there are more affordable options too, so I just I had to do all that. Okay, so that's what was going on in the Guild. Now let's dive into these. This is going to be an edited video again. I'm, I'm, I got some positive feedback that the, the minimal, uh, minimal amount of editing uh, is good. It makes for a better user experience for you guys. So I'm going to do that, but just broadly. So I'm, because I'm editing, I kind of get to go through uh, the whole process with you, and it won't be quite as boring. But uh, ultimately, these are, these are not particularly challenging blades to sharpen but they're exciting for me because uh because i think they're really nice they're, they're they're cool and they get used and they get carried um but anyway nothing nothing fancy on either, like nothing fancy as in like no like partial serrations no tonto tip uh nothing crazy but i am going to need to i'm i am going to cut lightly cut a new bevel and then we'll break out the edge pro and we'll take these both to a six thousand grit mirror polish finish and they're going to be dynamite so without further ado let's carry on i'm not sure that i always do a great job at going through the inspection process for knives that come across the bench so i'm going to take a little bit of extra time uh, doing it right now with these but i will say even for kitchen knives ultimately everything that comes across the bench gets a set of eyes and I, i'll confess i do it relatively quickly uh, and sometimes I might miss a little chip or something like that, but still, like, I'm going to run my eyes over the stuff that I do before I quote a price. 
Uh, in this case, I just want to go over in a little more detail some things that come up when I'm doing my inspection. The first thing that came up with me with this one is it has a nice little choil. I really like those. I'm not going to, I would consider if this were mine, making that a little bit bigger, especially as the edge gets cut back into the body of the knife. I'm not going to do that with this knife. Um, but it's not a very distinct edge. It, ha it looks like, based on the shine, like it looks like it at one time had a, a, a decent edge. I don't know if it had a mirror polish or not, but it, and it's not, there, there are some bright spots. I'm not sure how well those will come up for you. Uh, but there, so it does need some work, but it's not terrible either, right? Like it's, it looks like it's a, a, a well-maintained uh, carry knife that gets used. Few scratches on it, which is great. Like, as I say, that's the, I think that's the signature that we should be putting on all of the knives that we, that we uh, use and, and enjoy using and take pride in. Uh, but otherwise, not a whole lot to worry about there. That'll be relatively straightforward. Moving on to this one. First thing that caught my eye on this one is the thickness of the blade. Uh, that's a lot of steel right there. And then the, um, the very rounded tip here. That'll be a bit of work, to, um, a bit of work to control the bevel angle, right? So if we set the bevel angle here, uh, when we get on the edge pro, I'm either going to need to chase the chip, the tip around, or uh, as we come off the, we'll see when we get there. But it's catching my eye now, and I might, I might f need to cut a little bit more off of that bevel there, so I don't and spend a tremendous amount of time. Uh, or just so that it's doable, really. Um, and it, it looks it also like it's been worked a little bit. Not too bad. Otherwise, nice grinding work. Like, uh, yeah, sweet blade. Surprised there's no markings on it. Love the handle. Um, yeah, so, and again, like that, that looks like a big bevel to me. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to see how that'll uh, come take shape as we as we start working it. But otherwise, nothing else really catching the eye there. This one is also not in, I mean, it, it's due, but it's not in terrible shape either, right? It's not banged up or anything. So anyway, those are some things that I look at. And I am gonna start these on the one by 30 just to cut a bevel that I can work with on the Edge Pro. So let's head over there. All right, I'm gonna spare you the noise of the vacuum for the time being. And I just want to kind of talk through what's going to be going on here. So the first thing is just a light touch so I can get a feel for what the existing bevel angle is. Uh, so it's fired up. I'm also, I'll, I'll probably not even be touch. Eh, I'm going to go against a slack belt anyway, but I'm not going to do any platen grinding here. Right about where I anticipated, which is good. It'll be about 23 degrees, I think, is what I'll end up doing. Going out probably a little shallower than that here. Okay, come to this side. Forgive the uh, block image. Take a few passes. I can see a, a, a little, a few places more to, to go. Which is what I love about this. This would be a lot of work with a whetstone right now. Especially, especially right at the tip. Not sure, trying to get you a shot. so hard to see that on the camera. Okay, 
Okay. That one is ready for the stone. I want to try to get you this overhead shot to uh, give you a better sense of how I'm checking that angle. Hopefully this works out. All right, that, that tip was relatively hard to do and I expect that it'll continue to be relatively hard on the edge row. Okay, so even though these blades are used, they have some pre-existing scratches, I don't wanna be the one that puts any more on there. So let's tape them up. Now we are over on the Edge Pro. Start with this guy. I have the slide guide. I call it the spaceship, but and I do have a nice flat here, so I have an option. Ooh, I almost kind of like that. Right, so this is where you gotta start thinking through stuff. So I could I could grind on that flat, or I could come down to the face of the knife. And I have that stop there. I kind of like that better, honestly. We'll come up a little high there and come up here. So now I'm sliding in to where the plunge line is. Settled in, I can still get that. I'm right at the corner here. Let's see what this side looks like. Same thing, which is good. So now I've drab my magnet up and that is my spot. I'll have to go a little bit higher on the post since I'm grinding against this face and not this flat. But that's all good. Let's see. I started soaking some stones over here. I'm considering, I think I'm going to start with the 120 because I feel like this one might need a little bit of attention. I wonder if I'll end up doing a compound bevel with this. If that bevel ends up being really wide. And then, I don't know if I've showed you this before, but if I do the Sharpie trick, I like to dry everything off first. Too high. Bearing in mind, of course, you know, I cut that on the 1x30, so I could set whatever angle I want here. Didn't I say 23 degrees? Oh my god. Didn't I say 23 degrees? That's a, that's a remark. That's remarkable. All right, so let's uh, let's see what this let's see if we can get a burr up with this. Let's see what it looks like on here too. Yeah, that gets it's gonna be weird at the tip, but. that out, clean off my stone, by putting a burr up everywhere except, no, all right, so we got a burr on the whole edge. I must have just flattened this stone because it is not cutting real well. I found that out there. It takes a knife or two for the stone to cut well again. Ooh, 
that. Let's check that out. Okay, not us. Two twenty grit stone. Go to six hundred. Eleven hundred. <clears throat> Four thousand. All right, now we dry everything off, get out our polishing tape. Remember to do no pressure. All right, so that is a polished finish on an everyday carry fixed blade 
so a finger tight just to make sure. Keep a little bit of paper here just for a little feel test. Okay. That is satisfactory. All right, one other thing I don't discuss a whole lot is the after inspection too. And I just like to, I'm just running my eyes over. You're, you're getting a little glimpse of it too. But that um, is good. That's a, nice, that's a nice finish. That's good. That will be, that will feel like dynamite. I think... I'm going to consider putting a little Subaki oil on this before I send it home. All right, I am going to do the next one. I just finished this one and I want to call attention to something. It, it'll work out. It's fine here, but this is why I'm, I love the choil and why if this were my knife, I would make it bigger. So what happens when your stone, the, cor the, the edge of your stone comes up over here, it starts, it, it starts getting, it lifts up. And, but if you have a choil, it has like then it goes just into open space. And when it lifts up, it takes the center of the stone off the edge. So when you don't have a, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you can you see like the transition from the flat place to the grind is not a square. Like it 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 slopes down. So as you bring your your stone over here, this edge of the stone starts sloping up and then you're cutting uh, on, on just the corners of the stone and you end up making this problem worse. Uh, whereas if you, if you cut that choil out some more, then it doesn't, that corner doesn't lift up. You can see the different coloration there, right? Like I can't, if I don't cut that choil in, I, I have a real hard time, especially when I'm up with the polishing tapes to get that and you can, I don't know, you can see like, it, it's, it's gonna work. I got the edge. I just don't have the whole bevel polished. I hope that makes sense. And same thing. Yeah, it maybe is, yeah, maybe slightly less defined on this side. Yeah, there you go. You got these, is that it? Can you see that? Anyway. That is why I like the choil, and I should do a video of cutting a choil, shouldn't I? But anyway, that came out okay. Woo, whoop, oh geez. You might see yourself on the screen there. That mirror polish, E-S-E-E. -E. Okay, let me, uh, let me package these back up. These are good to go. All right, well there you have it, delivering a mirror polished finish on fixed blade carry knives. That's a service that I ask $15 for at the American Edge. And I get both, right? I get people that are like, you charge 15 bucks to sharpen a pocket knife? And I get people like, you only charge $15 to do that? And based on the amount of time I put into it, I think that it does warrant a higher price. I haven't gotten to the point where I've increased my price yet though. I will do uh, some add-ons like if it's a tonto partially serrated if i have to grind chips out all of those things will go on top of the 15 dollars sharpening fee if that idea interests you both learning that skill of sharpening and delivering a mirror polish finish on carry knives or any knives and then monetizing it and making money from that skill make sure you check out the guild of professional sharpeners you can learn more about that at guildofsharpeners.org make sure you subscribe thumbs up leave a little comment, hit the bell. All of those, those things help me out on YouTube, so I appreciate that, and I'll see you next week.